Contender Regime Boxing checking back in with y'all, man. What's good? I got a very interesting topic to touch on today, man. Very interesting. Now, y'all seen a while back, I made a post in a community about Eddie Hearn. And I have nothing personal against Eddie Hearn. You know, I just call this shit like I see it, man. I actually think Eddie Hearn is a, a pretty funny guy, you know, very charismatic. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, seem like, you know, he's a, a, a fun, loving type of guy. You dig what I'm saying? I don't have nothing personal against Eddie Hearn. But like I said, I call this shit how I see it. And the post that I made was pretty much, you know, discussing the failures of Eddie Hearn here in the United States. Now, we know that Eddie Hearn has, you know, he comes from a family of promoters. His his father, uh, you know, Matchroom Promotions, they've been around for a long time over there in the UK and they've had some success. You know, but Eddie Hearn, you know, coming into his father's business, you know, doing his own thing, he too have had some success. Of course, his biggest trinket that he's ever had was was and is Anthony Joshua. You know what I'm saying? And um, you know, he's done well with Anthony Joshua with with making making things happen happen for him, uh making him a star over in the UK and just building Anthony Joshua up, you know. So uh that's commendable. That's that's dope. You know what I mean? He was successful in that regard. But Eddie Hearn and the zone their whole, you know, Matchroom, Eddie Hearn, The Zone, when they first created The Zone, it was really to draw in the American boxing fans. Matchroom and Eddie Hearn and Sky Sports, they already had been doing their thing over in the UK. But the The Zone app was really created to get the to get the US boxing fans on board, you know, getting everybody over here to sign up. You know, starting to do fights in the U.S., bringing fighters from the U.K. over here and, you know, turning up and vice versa. That's what the zone was supposed to be. It was supposed to, like, bridge the gap and really take a U.K. platform or U.K. type of vibe and, and energy and bring that shit to America and thrive over here. That's what the whole and Anthony Joshua was going to be the big star to spearhead that shit. That's what it was supposed to be. Right. And and, and um, Eddie Hearn, his mission was to come over here and get the hot U.S. talent, sign some hot U.S. talent and be able to to build stars from the U.S. and have and be successful in this market as a promoter. Because prior to the zone, prior to you know them, you know spearheading that 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 whole mission, Eddie Hearn hadn't had any success in the U.S. with no U.S. fighters building nobody up, making any big fights in the U.S. So that's what this whole thing was about. I just want to set the stage and explain why I say that Eddie Hearn has failed as a promoter so far. Doesn't mean that it's over for him. But up until this point, he's failed. Now, let's talk about the guys that he's had that he have right now. Now, we know that Devin Haney is in business with Eddie Hearn. He did have like an exclusive deal or partnership with Eddie Hearn and his own uh, match room. Of course, Devin Haney has his own promotional company, DHP, Devin Haney Productions or Devin Haney Promotions. And they've had some success together, working together, uh, you know, just kind of helping to build Haney's name up. He already had a, a little buzz on his own. Him linking with Eddie, you know, that's definitely, I think they help each other out. You know what I mean? But he has Devin Haney. He also signed Demetrius Andre. Uh, Demetrius Andre undefeated uh, two-time world champion in two different divisions. You know, this guy was a, a, a great amateur, highly touted coming into boxing, and he had already had some success before Eddie Hearn came over here, you know, but 
he really had uh, made a name for himself like on the elite or top level in terms of getting big fights and shit like that. The getting the fights that's really going to push him to that next level. These are two guys that, in my opinion, are prime examples of why Eddie Hearn up until this point has failed um, in America and being a promoter over here in this market. Um, you know, now we looked at the, the Deontay Wilder and Anthony Joshua situation. All right. So I just wanted to paint the picture in regard to the different guys that Eddie Hearn has done business with. And I wanted to also put emphasis on the fact that Devin Haney and Demetrius Andre are two glaring uh, pinpoints that I want to, you know, shed light on in this video is because these are the guys that you are supposed to be able to show how your your promoter prowess or your businessman prowess and your ability to make fights and get, you know, take guys that really need that that extra help to get to the next level. That's what promoters do. If you're going to be a great promoter, if you claim you this great promoter and you get your guys fights and stuff like that, these are uh, Demetrius Andre and Devin Haney are prime examples. They're like projects. They're guys that you can really flex your ability on. You know what I'm saying? Like you say, OK, I'm a great promoter. These guys can't get no fights. Let me go fuck with them. I'll show y'all what a real promoter do and get these guys to fight. That's why these guys are prime examples. But I want to also show you, and again, over here in America, Deontay Wilder. Now, Deontay Wilder and Anthony Joshua was going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. There was so much shit going on. I don't even want to run down memory lane on that, on why that fight didn't happen. But there was a point in time where Deontay Wilder presented an opportunity to Anthony Joshua to make that fight happen, offered him everything that he wanted. He wanted a $50 million flat fee. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Deontay Wilder was willing to take whatever the the, the split was going to be to make that fight happen after they was going back and forth about the 50-50 shit. You know, all this wild shit. But when it really all came down to it, it didn't seem like Eddie Hearn wanted to put Anthony Joshua in the ring with Deontay Wilder just then. Now, I still think that that fight can happen. But at the time it was supposed to happen, it was a whole lot of bullshit going on with Eddie Hearn, Anthony Joshua, and them just not willing to do what it takes to make that fight happen. You see Anthony Joshua, he loses to Andy Ruiz. Of course, Deontay Wilder ends up losing later on down the line to Tyson Fury. But Eddie Hearn could have been delivered that fight for Anthony Joshua. Now, to say he, he would have won that fight or lost that fight, nobody knows. At that time when they were both undefeated, nobody really knows what the fuck was going to happen. You know, everybody got their own opinions and what they thought would have happened in that situation. But Eddie Hearn did not deliver that fight for Anthony Joshua. Now, Anthony Joshua still went on to have big fights, big ass arena fights and shit like that over in the UK. But that fight would have made Anthony Joshua a star here in the US. That was the big fight. Before Earl Spence and Terrence Crawford, Anthony Joshua versus Deontay Wilder was the biggest fight that could be made in the US. That was the biggest fight. It was a heavyweight fight. That The talks about that fight brought the heavyweight division back to prominence now of course Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury took that shit over because Deontay Wilder pulled Tyson Fury ass up off the couch and said fuck it I can't get in there with Anthony Joshua I'm gonna make you a star you know what I'm saying we gonna have a trilogy and we gonna bring the heavyweight division back together you dig what I'm saying um but that's that was supposed to be Anthony Joshua and Deontay Wilder but Eddie Hearn could not deliver that fight. Now, that was the biggest. Anthony Joshua, Deontay Wilder, that's the biggest fight. That would have been the biggest fight in Anthony Joshua's career. That was supposed to be his arch nemesis. His That was supposed to be like peak Anthony Joshua. That was his guy. And Eddie Hearn, now we're talking about Joshua being a UK guy, but again, that fight was supposed to be an American fight versus an, um, the American heavyweight in, in, in uh, Deontay Wilder because at the time, Joshua had the other three belts. 
Deontay Wilder was the only American heavyweight champion that we had. You dig what I'm saying? So that was supposed to be a crossover fight and bridge the gap and just be this mega heavyweight fight. Eddie Hearn could not deliver. Now let's talk about the real issue at hand. Him failing in America as a promoter. Now, I don't want to hear shit about the Canelo shit because Canelo, number one, was already a star. And then on top of that, Canelo was really making his own moves, fighting. I don't want to hear nothing about, oh, he made Undisputed with Canelo. Man, this, them dudes that, like, no disrespect to any of his opponents, Caleb Plant, Billy Joe Saunders, um, fucking Callum Smith. No disrespect to any of them dudes. But all them fights easy to make, bro. Them dudes was just looking for a payday. None of them dudes really showed up to win. Not one of them. All of them just showed up to get their ass whooped and get paid, period. There was no effort from Eddie Hearn to make any of those Canelo fights. He could have did them shits by himself. Only reason why Canelo was fucking with Eddie Hearn is because the zone paid him a bag. That's the only reason. The zone paid him a bag. And he, Canelo robbed the fuck out the zone. You dig what I'm saying? That's the only reason why those fights happened. So that shit had nothing to do with Eddie Hearn. Eddie Hearn is the promoter for Devin Haney and Demetrius Andre. Now, Demetrius Andre had the one belt left at 160 when Canelo, before Canelo went to 168. Canelo had three titles and Demetrius Andre had one. Is one fight left for Undisputed. You mean to tell me that this guy, Demetrius Andre, is in dire need of a big fight and you can't make this shit happen with Canelo? This right here, whether he win or lose, especially if he win, takes him to a whole nother level. This is exactly what the doctor ordered. This is what Demetrius Andre needed the most was an opportunity to fight Canelo Alvarez. And then on top of that, for Undisputed legendary shit and you couldn't fucking deliver you couldn't deliver you couldn't you can you can make you can get canelo this bag well canelo got that shit on his own to be honest he robbed them boys real talk you know what i'm saying but you know you can you you know you you had a hand in making undisputed happen at 168 where it really ain't no type of resistance now we know canelo got a feeling about Demetrius Andre, we know Canelo really don't want to fight Demetrius Andre because he know that's a very difficult style, a very difficult fight stylistically. He don't really want no parts of Demetrius Andre. So part of that ain't on you, Eddie Hearn, but at the same time, it is on you because this is the task at hand. Why would Demetrius Andre sign with Eddie Hearn if he can't get the Canelo fight? He can't even get the Triple G fight. These guys fight with the zone. Why the fuck, if I'm Demetrius Andre, he couldn't even get the Billy Joe Saunders fight because Billy Joe Saunders pop, popping dirty for drugs. But that's lower level shit, uh, Billy Joe Saunders. We talking about the big dogs. Demetrius Andre signed with Eddie Hearn and Matchroom and zone because he want the big fights. Eddie Hearn supposed to be this big time promoter coming from the UK. He's supposed to come over to America and make shit better again and shit like that. He can't get the big fights for his guys. Why the fuck Demetrius Andre couldn't get in there with Triple G or Canelo? And it was for Undisputed with Canelo and you couldn't make it happen. You couldn't get in there and offer Canelo something he couldn't refuse and make a bag. Hell, how the fuck you make Canelo and Billy Joe Saunders? You couldn't pay Canelo that or a little bit more to make that fight for your guy to take a chance and if he win y'all going crazy if he lose fuck it you take a risk okay that's example number one now you got Devin Haney why would Devin Haney sign with the zone and match room well Devin Haney had been chasing Lomachenko the whole time he seen that y'all was able to make the Lomachenko and uh, uh Luke Campbell fight you dig what I'm saying now, Devin Haney like, fuck it, let me go, let me go rock with Eddie, Eddie Hearn and them. You know, it seemed like they, they doing some shit. They got a bag for me over there. You know what I'm saying? The zone dude got that bag, which is even more of a reason why, you know, or um, why I'm even more like having a hard time understanding why the fuck 
you ain't making these fights. I know these dudes. Though. I know Lomachenko don't want no smoke with Devin Haney. I know Telefimo Lopez didn't want no smoke with Devin Haney. I know that Bob Arum was didn't want to put neither of his fighters in there unless Devin Haney was going to sign with top rank because he know Devin Haney fuck around, whoop they ass. And he want to keep everything in house. I understand. I understand. But at the same time, you Eddie Hearn. Why me, Devin Haney, why am I going to sign with DAZN and Matchroom if you can't fucking make the fights that I want? If that's the, if that's the, if it's just a bag, okay, cool. If I'm just going over there to get a bag, cool. But no, I'm coming over here to fuck with you. I can sign with PBC and get a bag. I can sign with Top Rank and get a bag. You know what I'm saying? I can sign with, you know, Lou DeBella and get a bag. But if it's, if I'm over here, I'm coming to fuck with you because... You know, Luke Campbell doing business with his own. Uh, Lomachenko did business with his own. You know what I'm saying? These And it seems like you got something going on. You talking this good shit, but you not making nothing happen. Okay, cool. So he couldn't get the Lomachenko fight. He couldn't get the Telefimo Lopez fight. And now here it is again. Devin Haney. You got a golden opportunity, Eddie Hearn. A golden opportunity. You can make this fight with Devin Haney and George Cambosis for undisputed. The winner of this fight will be the first true undisputed champion in lightweight history. Lightweight history. The first true undisputed champion in that division. Your fighter has a chance to achieve greatness. Do you really believe in Devin Haney? And if you do, why the fuck we still going back and forth on who the hell George Cambos is going to fight? I know George Cambos is in his camp really don't want to see Devin Haney. But it's your job as a promoter and as a matchmaker, whatever the fuck you supposed to be doing, it's your job to bring that bag to the table and get that boy in the ring with him. By any means necessary, whatever it's going to take. You got to take a risk on your fighter. Because if he win, y'all going to go crazy. If Devin Haney win, everybody going to want to see Devin Haney. You know why? Because they ain't going to have no justification for ducking him. He ain't fought nobody. Oh, he beat the man that beat the man that beat the man. Oh, he ain't got nothing to offer. He got all four belts. He undisputed. Oh, he don't sell no tickets. Devin Haney is selling tickets and he making more money than most of these dudes. He bringing shit to the table and he got a solid, supportive fan base behind him. Ain't shit they going to be able to do if Devin Haney go out there. He whoop Cambos' ass, especially if it's if it's in Australia. That win going to double in terms of, you know, um, attractiveness. You know what I'm saying? Attraction. That shit going to look way better. If he go over there and beat him in Australia. But I don't give a fuck where they fight. If Devin Haney beat George Cambosis. And becomes the first lightweight undisputed champion in the history of boxing. That shit is going to be amazing. And that's going to take Devin Haney to the next level. He ain't even got to fight at 135 again. But he can put them. He can put the belts on the line. And shit for a big money fight. Shit Tank might want to come holler at him. Loma might want to come holler at him. Somebody going to want to see about him. Because at that point, it's like, who else Who the, Who else the fuck you going to talk about? He can go up to 140. Now he's former undisputed lightweight champion of the world. Devin Haney moves up to 140. Who won't smoke? You know he going to be able to get any fight he want at 140 if he become undisputed. Because his resume going to be stamped. He going to be solid. Eddie Hearn has a golden opportunity to produce, to make up his, to, to make his, his um, reputation in America as a promoter, make it mean something for the next guys that's thinking about signing with Eddie Hearn, for the next guys like Devin Haney and Demetrius Andre who can't get no fucking fights because everybody ducking them. 
You know what I'm saying? And and people tell me they and people say, hey man, look, you know Eddie Hearn, he's a great promoter. You know he gonna make sure you get the fights you want. Let me go fuck with him. You know why should motherfuckers make them recommendations if you can't deliver? This your opportunity, Eddie Hearn. If you want to continue to collect top elite U.S. talent, I know you just got Montana Love, great pickup. You know what I'm saying? But that's really because the zone got that bag. You know that Eddie Hearn money, as he like to call it. Them Eddie Hearn checks. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to you for picking up Montana Love. That's top tier talent. But to keep that shit going, you got to make a statement with this shit. You got to make a statement with this. You dig what I'm saying? Like, come on now. This is your opportunity to change that stigma that's on your career right now. That's on your, 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 your resume. Your reputation in America. You ain't been able to make the big fights. For none of your guys, you ain't been able to get them none of the big fights. You've been a failure in America. And now you have a chance. If you can secure this fight for Devin Haney, this shit changes the trajectory of your promoting career in America and Devin Haney's career. And it's just going to make shit better for Matchroom, the zone. It's going to make shit better for them if Eddie Hearn can secure this fight. I know you trying, man, but do better. Get on your motherfucking job. If you let this fight slip away, Eddie Hearn, you ain't buy shit. And I don't see no reason for no American fighter to sign with you. You know what I'm saying? Especially no black American fighter because our fighters, the ones that's going to have the most difficulty getting fights. They're going to be the, if you on the level of Devin Haney, Montana Love, it's going to be hard for him to get fights. Motherfucker going to be like, he too good. What's my incentive on fighting him? He too good. You dig what I'm saying? So unless you, and even when you become champion, that's the crazy thing. Your only thing you going to have to lean on is mandatories. If you ain't no champion, you ass out. It's going to be hard for Montana Love to get fights until he become a, a, a champion. He going to have to be a, get up to a mandatory, fight somebody who got a belt, then become champion, and then he going to get mandatories. And hopefully somebody want to unify with him. This is your opportunity, Eddie Hearn, to show us what you got. Because as of now, you've been a failure in America. You ain't made shit happen in America. Nothing. Y'all let me know what y'all think down in the comments, man. How do y'all feel about the lack of success that Eddie Hearn has had in this market, in the U.S., making fights for guys that the ones that really need the shit. We ain't talking about Canelo. He, he, can, he don't even need no damn Eddie Hearn. He can do this shit by himself because motherfuckers want to fight Canelo because there's an interest there. There's an obvious interest there. But... What's the point of having a promoter if they, ain't, they can't get you no fights? Y'all let me know what y'all think down in the comments, man. Contender Regime Boxing. I'll holler at y'all boys, man.